Welcome everyone. Today's video is on how to draw flowering vines and dandelions. This is the sixth video in an ongoing tutorial series called All Creation Praises the Lord. Today's video is going to be how to draw flowering vines. And this is a larger drawing that I'm going to do in my sketchbook outside of my Bible just so you all can see in detail what exactly I'm doing. This is going to be much larger than what I've actually done in my Bible, but um, it'll show a lot more detail and I think it'll just be easier for people to follow along with their own ideas on how to draw these. So the first thing that I do is I'm using my Copic fine liner pen, .050 size, and I draw two squiggly lines coming down for the vine. And then I'm drawing a pod kind of flower. And right here I'm just going in and making random leaf or petal shapes with the veins. And when I draw these, I'm actually making the edges of the the petals kind of curl up. So that's what the rim is that you see around the edge of each individual petal. Now right here I'm just going in and I am shading the veins in each petal. And again if you if you watched my videos, my previous videos, which I do suggest you watch because it talks a lot about how to do the shading and how shading creates depth and dimension, taking something from a flat object into a object that looks like it curves and moves and has shape and dimension instead of something that's just laying flat on a piece of paper. So right here, the way I imagine these flowering pods, I guess you could call them, is that where the center vein is, is they kind of recede in and then as they move out to the edge of the petal, the petals curl up and around. So, since the center vein recedes in, that's where my main shadowing shading is going to start. And you can see that I am just making small stroke marks along that center vein. And then I'm going to the outside of the petal, where the petal actually curls up, and I'm making um, shadowing marks there because of course if you have something that curls up it's going to cast a shadow on whatever's below it. So giving that shadowing uh, underneath or above wherever behind the curl I guess is what I'm trying to say is what's going to give you the dimension in that. Now also this particular petal is actually kind of curving away from you and when that happens when something's curving away from you the furthest edge that's moving away from you is going to be a little bit darker than the rest of the the petal so I make that far edge far right edge on that particular petal a little bit darker to look like it's curving away and on this second petal you can see that I'm just going in and I'm doing the shading on the center vein and you might be able to kind of tell that I use the terms shading and shadowing differently. Shading is giving the dimension of that center vein receding in and then the shadowing is blocked light from the curve of the petals coming up and casting a shadow on the rest of the petal that's behind it. And when I draw these, when I shadow and shade these leaves, I follow the contour of the veins. And you can see in this picture that those shading lines and the shadow lines actually follow the shape of the veins. And that gives form and shape to the leaf itself. If I didn't follow the shape of the these petals and the veins, and I just kind of did random um, shading strokes in all different directions, it would look really odd. It would be kind of messy and it would be confusing to the eye because your eye couldn't really follow the shape. So as these leaves or petals curve out from the center vein, um, the shading strokes also curve to follow the shape of the veins that are extending out to the edges. 
Now these petals right here are actually layered underneath these front, the front petals. And so I want to put in more shadow, not just shading, but shadow to show that they are underneath and the light from the petals in the front is blocking the light on the top of those receding, those petals that are behind those front ones. So I just go in um, and, you know, imagine where my shadows are. And again, on this edge one, this edge is curving away from me, so I want to make sure that that receding edge on the very left is a little bit darker than the rest of that petal. Now I'm just going in and I'm darkening my darks. And here I am doing some tendrils and some other curly parts in the vine. Now when you draw these curly cues, do not connect all your lines together because it's actually really easy to get the inside of the line to suddenly become the outside of the line. And it kind of messes everything up. So leave a gap around your, your curls there. And then once you get it all drawn, you can go ahead and connect them. Now when I shade in the vines, I'm just shading from the edges. I'm not really shading the middle at all. And when this vine goes underneath a vine, I have a shadow. So I want to make sure that the vine that's going under is in shadow and the vine that's on top is in the light. And now here I'm just doing some simple heart-shaped leaves with a center vein and just doing some shading on the outside to give it some dimension and form. And these are really simple. And then some little curly cues. And this is what you end up with. And so that was easy, right? Now, this second part of the video, we're going to go ahead and watch as I go into my Bible. And the shapes that I'm using for the flowers here in my Bible are much more simplified. Also the shapes for the leaves are much more simplified because this is such a smaller scale. Um, I'm just using a generic leaf shape, you know, your generic pointy leaf shape. And for the stems, I'm only using lines. I'm not doing any kind of thick stems that need shading or anything like that because this is just too small to uh, really have any dimension in the vines and it's just not necessary. Now when I do these vines and the ribbons and things over that go over the text in, in my Bible, I don't actually draw over the text. I skip over it and your eye can't really tell that it's skipped over because the text in the Bible is actually pretty small. And when you look at it as a whole picture, your eye sees it as a continuous solid line. When it's in reality, it's just not. So the text in my Bible, the scripture, is still very easy to read. And that's very important to me because this is a, use, a working Bible for me. It's not just... Um, you know, something that I art journal in. I actually use this Bible. So for me, I need to keep it readable. And my preference in this is also just not to put too much color and things over the scripture. And I found out that I found that out the hard way because I did a two page spread where I did the whole page. Every you could see the scripture totally through it because I used only transparent mediums, but um, it was just too busy and it just distracted me while I was trying to read that scripture. It was still easy to read, it was just visually distracting to me. It might not be for anybody else, but it was to me. So that's why I now try to stick mostly to the margins. And I do, as you can see, go over the text a little bit, but for the most part, I really just don't go over the text anymore. And that's just my personal preference. Because for me, for whatever reason, it's just visually just harder to read when there's a lot of 
activity going on actually over the text. I'm fine with it all around the text and a little bit through the text as you can see with the ribbons, but when it gets too much actually on the text, it's a little difficult for me. Anyway, you can see here that I've gone ahead and brought down some vines and now I'm doing one of the flower pods and this flower pod is not anywhere near as complex as the beginning of this video that I did in my sketchbook. This is just basically the petals. It doesn't have all the vines or veins, not vines. Um, and it's just simple shading. And that's just because this is such a small area to work in that if I try to put more detail in there, it would just become a black blob. There's just not enough room. And as I add these vines going through the ribbons that I had already previously drawn in my Bible, I loop these vines in and out of the ribbons. So sometimes I draw the stem of the vine going over the ribbon, sometimes I draw the stem of the vine going behind the ribbon. And that gives it a lot of visual interest because, you know, we want this to look like it's moving, like it's blowing in the wind. And these ribbons and these vines are just hanging out and, you know, enjoying creation. You know, that's what this whole illustration in these verses is highlighting is that all creation praises the Lord. And it's not one particular verse in Psalms because there's there's a bunch of these verses in this area of Psalm, right around Psalm 98, 99, 100, where the earth is just praising the Lord. And so that was the inspiration for this drawing in my Bible. One thing I didn't mention at the beginning is that I don't prep this page when I'm using this pen. I'm just going straight in with this pen right onto the paper. And this thin Copic uh, pen, it's not a marker, it's a pen, is a pigment ink and so it doesn't bleed through and it's such a fine nib that um, it, it you can see it kind of shadowing through the background on the back of the page but it doesn't really bleed through. And so I don't find it necessary to do any kind of page preparation when I'm using this pen. Now here's another one of the flowering vines. And it's a big one also, a little bit bigger than some of the ones that I have put at the top of the page. But again, I'm just keeping this simple because it's such a small area that I don't really have a whole lot of room to put a bunch of detail in. With this flower, I am going to darken up the vine stem that it's hanging from a little bit, just because it's a bigger one, and so it needs a little bit heavier um, vine that it's hanging from. Now, a lot of these little leaf hanging leafy vines in the background just makes really nice filler, and it's very simple. Again, it's that basic leaf shape with just a little bit of shading coming off. Some of them, the really small ones that you can see up at the top, don't have any shading in them at all. Or if there is shading in it, then I just use dots rather than pin strokes because it is such a small area. And this is a really fast and effective way of just giving a nice background filler into whatever illustration that you're doing. In just a few moments you're going to see that off camera I went ahead and I did one of the more detailed flower pods uh, that I did in the beginning of this video here in my Bible. Of course it's on a much smaller scale. And then also some filler of dandelions and dandelion seeds floating around that I think are just really cute and super easy. So, And they don't really need much explanation. So I'm just going to let you watch the video and listen to some music until the end. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. And I really appreciate all the great comments and support. And please feel free to visit my blog or my Facebook or Instagram, which is listed at the end of this video. 
And if you have any questions, questions or comments, I will try and answer them as best I can. Thank you. Sides make us feel at home as we pass by.